coming up. I have a chat with a coolant hose. Come on, you're coming out. You have to come out. I whistle. I'll show you how to expertly remove BMW kidney grills. And the big seven meets German tooth. Welcome back to the fourth part of Project Dubai. We are swiftly picking up where we left off in the previous episode and continue preparing the 7 series for German tooth inspection. We are kicking off with headlights. Despite being in Dubai for the last few years, the lights were still set up for left hand traffic as this car was sold brand new in Japan. This can easily be sorted by moving the cutoff shield on the projector without taking anything apart, but I wanted to go step or two further and improve light output as well make the headlights look like new. To achieve that I bought this Bi-Xenon Mini H1 kit from Retrofit Lab which contains everything that one would need to drastically improve the light output on this car. The link to this kit is in the description below. First step is to whip out the headlights. Alright. And here's what we are working with. Before I open it, it gets a scrub with all-purpose cleaner to prevent dust from entering the headlight. One, that's why. No broken tabs. Excellent. Good, it didn't break. Ta -da! The wiring inside is a crumbling mess. Normally you can buy them new from BMW rather cheaply, but everything was closed because of pandemic and I didn't want delay so I decided to repair it. Bit of soldering and heating tubing and it was good as new. I also soldered in the wiring for the bi-xenon function. Then I thoroughly cleaned the headlight housing. And now the projector. The old one is removed. First, the bracket is mounted on the new projector. And projector bolted to the shroud. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The bulb. That's it. Yes. 
Then it's temporal installed on the car to test it and if needed further alignment. With that working beautifully I can take out the inner lens to clean it. New lens cover. Beautiful. Luckily I can just copy paste the same on the other one. This is the finished result. Some protection to, well, protect it. Before putting it all back together, some cleaning was in order. To complete the refreshed look, I also went for new turn signals. And here's the cutoff and light output now. It vastly improved the look and performance of these headlights, which is exactly what I was aiming for. If you own an E38, I highly recommend getting this retrofit kit. Moving along to the interior. The electric rear headdress were not working and in need of fixing. The small plastic worm gear inside the mechanism broke and had to be replaced. Remains of the old ones are drilled out. There you go. Nice and easy fix. Next up, fixing flimsy door panels and removing the tint. Jesus. There's nothing else holding you down. Jesus Christ. The upper part of the door panel was coming undone, so I simply glued it back in place. I secured it with tape and left it to dry. In Germany, the tint is only allowed on the rear windows if you have proper certificates, which I don't. And since I generally don't like the tint, I'm removing it from the entire car. I find that steamer works well as the glue doesn't stay on the glass. Yes. Garbage. I complained in part 1 that there was like a pink fumey smell inside the car. Turns out it was the rear tint all this time. It was two layered. The first one came off easily, but the one underneath put up a fight. Steam was doing nothing, so I resorted to shouting and a scraper to remove the old glue, which only took me half a day to do. Only two defroster lines were exposed on the surface of the glass, so I had to be careful around them. The rest were inside the glass, which made things a bit easier. Ah, wonderful. A. It's done. With the door panel dry, I set about replacing plastic clips. Brilliant. Replacement roller blind. And the door panel. Okay. All right. Firmly reattached. And now piece the resistance. Replacement window shade. 
nice did the same on the other side along with new clips on all door panels so another thing that needs fixing is the right side mirror because the folding function on that side is not working that one is working beautifully And out comes the mirror. First thing we need to do is remove the ruined glass. <laughs> that was stupid. I was expecting to find broken gears inside, but they were just bone dry and stuck. So I packed them with fresh grease. And... Oh yes. A lastly, replacement mirror. That's The mirror adjustment is working. Yes. It's actually faster than the left one. Now it was time to take apart the central console for two reasons. First being that everything was flimsy and loose. This is not good. Second, the airbag light came on when I was replacing batteries and the code was pointing out to a defective airbag module that lives behind the rear vents. There it is. Navigation removed. All right, let's maneuver it. Plastic falling apart. So here's the ABS module that we need to remove. It has two nuts here and here. There is the son of a bitch. Here is the new ABS module. The old one can be fixed by uploading fresh data on it if you have the proper tools, which I don't. The new one was from E39 and to make it work, I just had to mirror airbag equipment from the old module to match with the car and select them with PA Soft. Airbag light comes on, goes off, and that's it, it stays off. Job well done. Now back to the center console. Every single plastic tab was broken on it, causing everything to be loose as nothing could be fastened down. So I replaced it with one that was intact. Time for the central console to go back in. This goes here.
I also replaced small air filters located in the footwell of the driver's and drinker's side. The ashtray was not sitting straight, so I swapped it out with one that did. And here's the new ashtray fitted. New leather armrest without the phone, which was rather hard to find. And now the beautiful armrest. Oh yes! This is that luxurious life. I have a different steering wheel in mind for this. And a banana on top, correct E38 frame for the head unit. Ta -da! I also installed non-broken C-pillars and that's the bulk of this beautiful interior sorted. In the upcoming episode I'll be redoing the headliner in Alcantara and thoroughly cleaning the interior. Moving on, the windshield had a star-shaped crack and normally this wouldn't be a big deal, but German law says, if the crack is in the driver's direct field of vision it cannot be repaired and must be replaced. So I went ahead and did exactly that, okay. as otherwise you wouldn't be able to pass the inspection. This isn't something I can do on my own so I hired a guy. Two of them actually. They quickly took out the old windshield and I helped by getting in their way and cleaning nooks and crannies that otherwise aren't accessible. I also bought a new windshield cowl which they installed as the old one crumbled away. Finally, new wiper blades. There it is. Next up, kidney grills. They were unfortunately glued onto the hood. The left one I already punched out in part one, and to refresh your memory, here's how to remove BMW kidney grill that was glued on by some idiot. A lot of plastic went all over the place. Why would someone do this? Why? Why just not a bad replacement one? Why glue it? What were they thinking? That no one ever is going to remove this. Oh my god! I mean, look at that! Look at this! Look! I don't understand. Removing the residual glue was a nightmare. I had to scrape it off, wet sand it and polish it. I was able to remove most of it, but there are some spots where the paint was permanently damaged. For the most part, new grills covered that up. Then just for fun, in air quotes, I bought one eBay kidney grill and tried to install it. Which went well. Told you that one well. Anywho, I did the right thing and bought a new from my local BMW dealer. Brake lines were looking rather poor with cracks in the rubber, so that is next to be replaced. Fingers. and then set about bleeding the brakes. The last thing to do before heading out for inspection is to replace missing covers behind the front left and right wheel. And clean engine and transmission covers. Good. Double good. And with that, this beauty is ready to take on German TÜV. In case you're not familiar with it, TÜV is a periodic vehicle safety inspection that takes place every two years in Germany. It's similar to MOT in the UK, if not even more strict in some areas. Since this is an import car from Dubai, a special TÜV 21 for full acceptance needs to be done. It's a bit longer and detailed compared to the regular one, as they also need to create German technical documents for emissions and whatnot, and charge you more money. The car does need to be in great mechanical shape in order to pass. All important aspects of the vehicle are thoroughly inspected. 
suspension, tires, brakes, rust, lights, emissions, as well as the smaller stuff like wiper blades. I actually like it in that sense as they go over the car from top to bottom and make sure it's 100% roadworthy. The area where tooth is especially strict is if you want to modify your car. Any modifications such as different exhaust, changing the ride height, aftermarket wheels and even different tire size than what factory prescribed need to have approvals and certificates and eventually entered in the registration of the car. I went over the car in detail and I was pretty positive there shouldn't be any issues but with tooth you never know. We just finished the tooth inspection and I'm happy to report that it passed with flying colors. I'm holding here the most important piece of paper for this car, where it says Une Mengel, which means no defects. The car was thoroughly inspected, it took almost two hours, but the guy didn't find anything wrong with the car and just commented how everything is new on it, which it basically is, especially underneath. And now I have all of the papers that are necessary to register this car in Germany. I've been dying to drive this car on the Autobahn. And now I'm going to celebrate with Nopas or Nupas or whatever it's called. The celebration party took place back in the garage where I decided to take apart the upper area of the engine. Now bear with me, I haven't gone insane. Yet. I have reasons. Reason numero uno. The vacuum pipe on the side of the intake manifold was broken and someone attempted to fix it with sealant. Reason numero dos. I hooked up the smoke machine for detecting leaks and there were vacuum leaks. Several of them. Can you see that? Those are leaking intake manifold gaskets. Or so I thought, but you'll find out in a bit that's not the case. Reason numero tres. I wanted to replace these ugly looking intake manifolds and gain better access to clean the engine bay. Andiamo a lavorare. Now I'm going to put the hood in the service position. Now I need to go there. Up you go. And that's how you put the hood in the service position on BMW E38. So basically you just remove the hood struts and you put, I believe this is M8 bolt through the hole and you thread it here. Look how much space for activities we have now. Let's continue unplugging stuff. There it is. Let's remove the throttle bodies. Look at this device. Insane. This came out so easy. Houston, we have a problem. These are longer, these are shorter. Yes, here we have two original fuel injectors that are falling apart and 10 injectors that are from pre-facelift 750 that are incorrect for a facelift M73N engine in this car. Obviously, they are different lengths, so they were not sealing properly and causing a massive vacuum leak. Again, I'm just amazed with the expert work that was done on this car. All right, let's continue. I believe that's all of them. There we are. Now this botch here is one of the main reasons why I had to remove the intake manifolds. Because this was broken and they used sealant to put it all back together. Jesus. And here are the intake manifold gaskets. Okay. 
Wall cover gaskets were not leaking, but since I was already there, I wanted to replace them and get a glimpse of the innards of the engine. Alright, let's pop this wall cover off. Not gonna be that easy. Say hello to another hack jobbery that has befallen this poor car. The wall cover gaskets were glued shut. There's no other way of describing this. It took me an incredible 40 minutes of prying to separate it. Come on! Nopity nope. I don't understand. Oh. Why and how did I end up with this car? Look at that. One, two, three, I hate, I hate it. Oh my God, finally. I cannot believe they used glue here. I do not, I refuse to believe that. I, I've just never. I've come across sealant being used here and that stuff usually just peels off. But whatever they used here, it was next level. The engine looks pretty clean on the inside, so that's good, I guess. Camshafts looking lovely. I spent the next few hours cleaning up everything. Then the cover goes back with a new gasket without glue. Like that. It's all of them. Same buffoonery was done on the other side, so I bravely decided to leave it alone. Let's face it, it will never leak. Then I could focus on the cooling system as I wanted to replace coolant hoses and thermostat. Well, at least that was easy. The hose that goes to the alternator. Oh. <clears throat> Come on, you're coming out. This is supposed to be easier and quicker to remove, but it never is. Let's try my luck with this one. This one is even, oh, nope. There it is. Of course it won't run. Of course, why wouldn't it? You have to come out. <laughs> there it is. Stupid hose. Here comes the bride. If the bride is a knacker 20 old thermostat. Time has come to clean the engine bay. Many ways of going about this. Mine consists of an all-purpose cleaner, water in a spray bottle, couple of brushes, air compressor to blow stuff out, and 347 microfiber towels. Probably the slowest method, but pressure washing or pouring water all over is an absolute nine here. I wasn't going for a showroom finish, just clean. You know, something that doesn't say they pulled me out of the desert yesterday. Here are the replacement intake manifolds which received a good scrub. New vacuum pipes which are tapped into place. Also new PCV valves. To seal the intake gaskets I'm using the tried and tested method of resealing them with Victor Rhein sealing compound. Das ist fertig. Completed. The hardest part here was dealing with PCV valves as they had to be bolted after installing intakes. Took me a while, but this nifty tiny ratcheting spanner came to the rescue. These are the correct fuel injectors for the M73N engine. They are air shotted injectors that improve fuel atomization and have small pipes on the side that draw vacuum from the intake. Beautiful. I then replaced 8 million vacuum lines that this thing has and tested for leaks. Looks like we are golden boys. 
It is not leaking anywhere. Gut gemacht! Here's before after of the engine bay. Not too shabby. Let's hear how she sounds now. Yeah, nah, that started clicking sound that appears to be a dead battery turned into a day of troubleshooting. Both batteries were fully charged and the car would only start if I connect the jump pack on the posts in the engine bay. After rechecking that I connected everything three times, fuses, relays, I swapped out the battery isolation switch and the stupid thing was starting normally. To reward me for all the hard work that I put into it, it gave me a check engine light and code for camshaft position sensor. Typical, you fix one thing and three more breaks. On the bright side, it's a cheap part that's easily accessible. It is right there in that mess. You can see the screw for it. Now let's hear it run. Sounds wonderful. A lot better than it did before, actually. Beautiful cold start. very healthy engine it's been a battle but we are finally at the point where this c38 runs perfectly and for the most part we are done with the mechanical side of the car i'm still waiting on a license plate so i can at last take this luxury board for a drive and see what else breaks that being said we are far from finished the interior still needs some odds and ends like redoing the headliner in alcantara and then we can deal with cosmetics like replacing the front bumper repainting the rear one paint correction and complete detail of the exterior then we'll be done Thank you so much for following along and as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. I'll see you in the next one.